This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. Parents are calling on a local school district to make their kids walk to class safer. I'm Stephanie Wade working for you tonight to see what can be done. RTV6 is keeping on the case of this neighborhood that's been left in the dark. Why the city utility says it's having trouble getting the lights back on this busy roadway. And this group's mission is to nurture and guide the men who need it most, making sure they understand it's okay to show your pain. How mastering mental health is helping them take a step forward. Good evening to you here at 6 o'clock. I'm Mark Mullins. And I'm Amanda Starantino. Some parents in Center Grove are asking for the school district or the city of Greenwood to make their kids walk to school safer. Yeah, mother says that she's reached out to every possible department about adding a crosswalk near a busy road, but hasn't had any luck. And that's when she reached out to RTV6. Our Stephanie Wade is working for you tonight to see what can be done. In order to get to Pleasant Grove Elementary or Center Grove Middle School, students who walk to class and live in the Pebble Run subdivision say they can't cross the street safely. They're calling on crosswalks to be added. I grew up in the older part of Greenwood and I walked to school as a kid and of course we had sidewalks and there was a crossing guard and all that so it was really nice and yeah, here it's, it's a little dangerous, kind of scary that time of the morning when you've got so much traffic and people are trying to drop their kids off. Matt Onspach tries to walk his kids to school as often as he can. He has a second and fifth grader at Pleasant Grove Elementary and a seventh grader at Center Grove Middle School. He worries when his middle schooler walks home from class without a stoplight or anything to slow traffic down for him to cross Fairview Road. If you knew there was a crosswalk, you'd feel a little better about that and not necessarily concerned that they're going to get hit crossing the road. He and his wife have tried to reach out to differing city and county agencies to request one to be added. She called the city first, but we're not within the city limits, so they referred her to the county. And then the county just kind of said what we need, but didn't really tell us how to get it and then we talked to several people at the school district and again they kind of said the same thing well you you know you need certain things but nobody's really saying how we're going to do that or how we can make it happen neither the city of greenwood or johnson county have gone back to me the center grove community schools assistant superintendent says they do not give elementary students permission to walk to school since there are no sidewalks in the area but do allow middle schoolers they have also been in contact with the Johnson County Highway Department. Any request to add a crosswalk would have to go through them. Both Fairview here and then Morgantown are two major roads. The speed limit's 40. People aren't paying attention. So I just think it'd be important to have the side or the crosswalks there for safety's sake. Working for you in Greenwood, Stephanie Wade, RTV6. Stephanie, thank you. Our mission is to help improve your life if we can. So if you have a problem you can't get fixed, then connect with us. Email us at workingforyou at rtv6.com and we will see what we can do to help. Marion County prosecutors have filed new charges against a semi-truck driver accused of causing a fiery crash that left a mom and two children dead. Bruce Pollard is now charged with seven reckless driving charges for injuring more people on Interstate 465 that July day. RTV6 reporter Kara Kenny has been digging into Pollard's driving history since this crash happened. She joins us now with why prosecutors say the charges are necessary. Kara. That's right, Amanda. Bruce Pollard is now charged with a total of 11 counts, including seven additional additional reckless driving charges. That's one charge for each of the people injured. Court records show drivers and passengers suffered horrific injuries like rib and spinal fractures, lung contusions, hip and shoulder pain, as well as emotional trauma from the July 14th crash. Semi-truck driver Bruce Pollard was charged back in July with three counts of reckless homicide for the mother and two children that died in that crash. He was also charged with reckless operation of a vehicle in a highway work zone. We reached out to Pollard's attorney and he says he's still waiting on a doctor's psychiatric evaluation, which should be available in a few weeks. Now the federal government has declared Pollard an imminent hazard and he can no longer drive a commercial vehicle. Records show he was fired from a job in Missouri back in April after he caused a rear end collision and then months later nearly caused another. Pollard started a new job in June 2019 at Weston Transportation in Missouri, but failed to disclose his termination and 
and crash history. It's unclear if Weston Transportation did a background check on Pollard. That's the company he was working for when the deadly crash happened on 465 in July. Now, Pollard admitted to police he took his mother's pills before driving. Toxicology results have not yet been released, so it's possible Pollard could face additional charges depending on those results. His next court date is scheduled for September 26. Back to you. Kara, thank you for the update there. RTV6 is working for you, holding accountable those who could affect your quality of life. And right now, the only thing lighting the streets at the night in this north side area, well, as you see there, are car lights. College Avenue residents say they're frustrated by the total lack of street lights between 38th and 42nd streets. So we took their concerns to Indianapolis Power and Light, who told us this is linked to the Indigo Red Line construction. Well, IPL says there is still a lot of post construction that crews need to do, and its team is meeting with Red Line contractors to develop next steps to repair underground cables. We've checked in with IPL twice since the last week in there, our request to get the lights back on, but no response yet. And with this kind of heat, you'd be forgiven for, get, for forgetting it's September. And that means people are still getting all kinds of action out in the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We're giving you a view of the golf course at IMS from our Skycam 6 drone. Looks nice. Storm Team 6 Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory can tell us how your evening is looking. Hey, Kevin, I wish we were out at that golf course today. Everything is lush green. I've been in the creek on the edge of that golf course before many times. It's just a beautiful day. Temperatures on the warm side. Feels more like July. Certainly that's the magic number. We hit 92 today. We don't get any historical credit. This record was set just a few years ago, 2013. We hit 96 degrees, so it does happen in September. When the dew point temperature gets to 65 or above, that's when you really start to notice it, and you can see western Indiana along the Wabash River, dew points in the low 70s, the same in Peru. That will not change until we get to the weekend. Not bad timing, though, that it will feel more comfortable as we get to Saturday. We'll stay in the very muggy category next couple of days with a slight chance for a shower or thunderstorm. We've backed off 89 is our current temperature, three degrees cooler than the afternoon high. There are your heat index values as warm as 94 degrees that in Peru. Temperatures overnight tonight between now and 11 will only cool into the low 70s. And that's really where we'll stay in the morning hours tomorrow. Chance for any showers, just 20%. And there's your temperature pattern down a little bit as we head to the weekend. More details on that coming up. We'll see you soon, Kevin. Thank you. Today is World Suicide Prevention Day, a time to pause and take a a moment to make sure you are addressing you and your loved one's mental health. RTV6 marked today with a special initiative called Stop the Music in partnership with the Indianapolis Recorder and Radio 1 Indy. A two-hour block today with no music or ads on all Radio 1 stations. Talking about self-care and preventing suicide. We've also worked hard to compile resources and find stories of people who've gone through their own struggles. And new at six tonight, could clippers and conversation help save a life? The organizers behind a regional initiative training barbers to listen and provide mental health support think so and it makes sense since so many men feel comfortable in the barber chair it's a time when talking comes naturally Lorenzo Lewis believes a fresh fade and an honest dialogue have the power to save lives. We're training barbers to spot signs of depression and anxiety so they can be able to be inclined to help their loved ones and their families that enter the barbershop but also in their broader communities. Lorenzo founded in 2016 what's called the Confess Project, an organization that helps marginalized men of color nurture their mental health and develop strong coping skills to deal with pain. I always tell people about the story of me. My mother was incarcerated. When I was born. In this workshop called the Barber Coalition, Lorenzo is using slides to share some sobering research. Suicide is the third leading cause of death for African American men. And only 6% of black men used mental health services in the last year. He's hoping these professionals take seriously a challenge to be mental health advocates for the men who stop in for a haircut. They are supported through a network, obviously through us, but also we really empower them with self-confidence and really empowering them with the motivation to be able to understand that they're becoming advocates, not experts, and they really be able to, to use this to really see people to have a level of success. Indianapolis marks the 10th city to which Lorenzo has brought his Barber Coalition training, partnering with barbershops and local 
local mental health care providers across the South and the Midwest. The barbers are trained to recognize warning signs and be the liaison between their clients and the mental health services they may need, but might be hesitant to seek themselves. So we realize that barbershops are a place that people really come to more than uh, also their schools and their institutions. So we're really bringing on a, um, building a platform in barbershops so that people can feel comfortable, um, can be able to connect with individuals that they know, and also seeing how this can really create change. The Confess Project and its barber coalition started in Little Rock, Arkansas. It has seen success with more barbershop customers following through with counseling and therapy. The barbers on board with the projects must meet some requirements too. They must be licensed. They must be willing to learn and receive training regarding a broad scope of mental health. They must live in the South or the Midwest and have access to social media. Still ahead on the news at 6, RTV 6 is hiring Hoosiers, is telling stories of success and people finding their place. How one group is fulfilling a mission to teach adults with disabilities the skills for employment. Every person is different, so it can be difficult to diagnose a mental health issue. In order to get insight into your possible suicidal tendencies, evaluate yourself. This World Suicide Prevention Day, you can do that online stress-free. We found a resource for you at SciMed. The suicide risk test can help you find out what you need to do next to take care of yourself. We've got that resource included on the IndieChannel.com. This is our TV6 News at 6. Your city with more work to do. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. Every journey begins with a single step. That is why this World Suicide Prevention Day, we want to share this planning resource if you or someone you love is struggling. The Suicide Prevention Resource Center says effective prevention starts with proper planning, whether you're a doctor or a patient. Helpful guides on how to get started are in a link right now at theindiechannel.com and the RTB6 app. And today we continue to mark World Suicide Prevention Day. We're highlighting one local school that is taking big steps to support mental health initiatives with both students and teachers. Mount Vernon Middle School seventh grade teacher Deb Thomas is a top 10 teacher of the year in Indiana. She advocates for more mental health resources for teachers after she suddenly lost a fellow educator last year. She's pushing lawmakers to create legislation that better address mental health resources and training for teachers. This week, Mount Vernon High School is also hosting the Rise Above It Mental Health Workshop for both adults and students. That's happening tomorrow at 4.30 in the afternoon. The interactive workshop will address anxiety, addiction, vaping, depression, and other mental health issues. And with RTV6's Hiring Hoosiers, we are not only working to connect you to job opportunities and training, we are also looking at barriers that keep people from working. Our Lauren Casey traveled up to Zionsville to learn about an initiative giving job training to adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities, a story that we think will warm your heart. It may even inspire you to get involved in their mission. Well, we're right now painting the curves, as you can see. These workers may look like they're with the town of Zionsville. Oh, it feels amazing. Yes, I've been making good friends. But Alex Gillahan is part of a nonprofit corporation called Watch Us Farm. And while today they aren't on the farm, that is part of what they do to get work ready. I've been planting fruits and vegetables. I've been going to the trails, painting. Busy summer. Yeah. We don't take money for this. My husband and I do this because this is what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And I want people to have jobs. Janice Argerwall is the executive director, and this is her vision. After spending time living in Europe, she saw how community farms help to teach adults with intellectual disabilities skills for the workforce. It gives quality of life. It gives a community something to support. There are lots of volunteers, and it changes their lives. It changes lives. Um, so when you start seeing this all over the world, I wanted it here. Watch this farm provides basic jobs and training for adults with disabilities who are high functioning and can work, but they may need a little bit of help. Sometimes they can be totally independent, but they may need you to come in and check on them. So we want to be that safety net for them. Janice and her staff break down the tasks step by step. And then we um, kind of figure out what they can and can't do and how they learn. Take pictures and document the steps. Someone asked me, could they do this job? I now know how I can break it down and I can start 
learning how to place kids. Right now, they're partnering with the town of Zionsville to do this work on the streets. The town gives them the supplies. They, they, they work hard. They'll do the same thing every single day for 10 years, and they'll be fine with that. Mm -hmm. You know, they just don't do change that well. Workers like Alex get paid for his hard work, and he gets some help from volunteers who become his friends. And his message for you as he picks up his paintbrush? I would love to get more friends out here. So how can we make this job training successful for adults with disabilities? Janice tells us she needs people like you. Not only are they partnering with places like Zionsville and Carmel, but they also want to work with local businesses. They always need volunteers to work alongside their adult workers, and they need donations and community support. They have big plans for the future of their farm and workers. Educational opportunities, jobs, career resources. We're working to make sure you get what you need with this initiative. You can find all of our stories right now on the RTV6 app and at our website, HiringHoosiers.com. Let's talk 90 degree days. Certainly today was one of them. It's our 19th so far this year in 2019. We average uh, 15 days a year with temperatures at 90 degrees or warmer. Remember 1983? I know some of you do. I do. 58 days of 90 degree temperatures are warmer. That's the all time record. There's the canopy of green of all the trees and just a few cumulus clouds around this evening. Call it partly cloudy and temperature is down three degrees from that afternoon high in Indianapolis. It's 87 in Lafayette and Peru, 90 in Terre Haute and Columbus, throw in Muncie as well, and we're duty bound to talk humidity. You combine temperature and humidity and you come up with a heat index of 92, 96 in Terre Haute. That's one of the warm spots. Temperatures tomorrow about the same. The only controlling factor really will be the amount of cloud cover and the timing of that through the day. The chance for a thunderstorm is just 20% Wednesday and Thursday. More clouds and I do think thunderstorms develop on Friday. That'll keep temperatures around 86. There are your low rain chances next two days, much higher Friday. That will have an impact on our weekend temperatures. Overnight lows way up here next two mornings, then more comfortable just in time for the weekend. Those cooler temperatures will come with lower humidity as well. Already at 73 first thing in the morning, a noontime temperature of 83. Oh, so close to 90 again, could be our 20th of the year. The chance for an afternoon thunderstorm just 20% temperatures pretty uniform. Everybody around the 90 degree mark, certainly within a degree or two of that. This is what I mean by isolated thunderstorms right on the edge of the bubble of heat. We could have an isolated thunderstorm, not just tomorrow, but on Thursday, the cold front on Friday will expand and the coverage of thunderstorms will be uh, much greater. Thursday, 90 degrees. For the afternoon high, the chance of a shower or thunderstorm really increases late in the day ahead of the cold front. There's Thursday night. Friday, we'll see scattered thunderstorms. Temperatures that Thursday hit 90 will back off on the Friday and then feel much better as we go to the weekend. 81 Saturday, mid 80s on Sunday. Temperatures will still be in the mid 80s early next week. Temperatures on average around uh, 80 this time of year. So we'll be above average again next week, it looks like. It got hot again. It did. Period, right? Oh, really hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave first joins us now with some sports. Oh, come on. It's September. Enjoy it while we can. And good evening. It's a time-honored tradition at IU. The Hoosiers getting off to a nice start. Win some games. Good for morale. And then it's Ohio State week. The Bucks are ranked sixth in the country. It's a noon kick this Saturday in Bloomington. This year's edition has IU coming off a 52-point drubbing of Eastern Illinois. And in it, some solid play by redshirt freshman quarterback Michael Penix Jr. It is two games so far this season. Penix has thrown for over 500 yards, three touchdowns. The lefty has completed 63% of his passes. Can't wait to see, though, some of the Big Ten's pass this weekend. Oh, we're all looking forward to it. You know, we're all just working Extremely hard, you know. It's just another game for us. You know, we know it's a big one, and we're just gonna come out and execute how we always do. There's no question. There's a heightened sense of intensity and focus and and uh, urgency that's created because of who it is and and uh, the fact that it's a conference game. So uh, I think everybody understands that, and our older guys have to help our younger guys. You know, 
realize that. Uh, meanwhile, Colts easing back into their work week, back at it in full tomorrow before heading to Nashville this weekend. By the way, the Colts, three-point underdogs to the Titans. In NASCAR, we may have seen Paul Menard's last Brickyard 400 today, the 39-year-old announcing that he'll step down from the series top level. Remember, he won the 2001 Brickyard, his only career win. Fan favorite Matt Benedetto will take over the Wood Brothers 21 car next season. Menard joins David Reagan as veterans who have now announced their retirements this season. Hope you join us tonight on the news at 11 o'clock only on RTV6. There's no place like home for Columbus's Tony Stewart. The three-time NASCAR champion is running 100 short track races this season, but don't hold your breath about another Indy 500. He's thinking less and less about it. If you're going to do this and, and do it right with the intention of having a shot to win, you're going to have to run all the oval races the year before uh, because Indy's the first oval race of the season so uh, you're gonna have to run all the oval races the year before to get acclimated and uh, you know it's it would take a lot of time and dedication to do it and and a diet are you <laughs> what are you saying I'm saying I need to go on a diet <laughs> if I'm gonna ever race an Indy car again uh, good advice for all of us to smoke thanks tonight at 11 o'clock hey first and foremost with the Cubs you see this Nico Horner with his first big league at bat for the Cubs landed a shot to short right Good for a base hit, so you got to save the baseball, right? Well, first big league hit. They give it to Jonathan LaCroix, the backup catcher, who then, what, tosses up up the stands? Or does he? Another replay actually had a different ball in the other hand, switched him out, threw the dummy ball into the stands. Don't know when Herter exactly found out about all this, but the Cubs went on to win late last night. 10-2, same two tonight at 10 in San Diego. Now you see it. Now you don't. Tony Stewart in the spotlight at 11. Until then, the news at 6 continues after this. Only at Papa John's. This is the news at 6 on RTV6. The heart of the city is about to get some upgrades. Downtown Indy Inc. is making changes to the Soldiers and Sailors Monument. Pretty soon it'll have better lighting, the ability to project video, and performance staging with a cutting-edge sound system. You can expect light shows, seasonal experiences, and a nightly salute synchronized with an original score from the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra. This all starts November 9th. Fun. Cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking cool. exciting, right? Looking forward Can't to wait. that. All right, this is one intimidating lawnmower. I didn't mean it to be scary. Well, let's get to mow. <laughs> but it is. Get out of the way! <laughs> <laughs> I, caught, I caught that, Mark. He said, that's good to mow. Uh, <laughs> All right, temperatures tomorrow. Now, now I can't get the button to switch. We'll be around 90 once again. And the same on Thursday. We have mow news for you at 7. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's wow. Really, Sorry. We are weak. <laughs>